So the first piece of the puzzle is uh, black energy. And also, it is, it is tracked by many of you guys and, and as, uh, under the name of Sandworm uh, because of the cultural references uh, to Dune uh, found in uh, some of their uh, CNC, uh, CNC domains uh, being used at that time. So we've been tracking this group for, for quite a while. Specifically, we're talking about Black Energy 2 and Black Energy 3 or Black Energy Light. Uh, and so the first campaigns, the targeted campaigns of Black Energy go back uh, to around 2010. Uh, there were numer numerous campaigns, mostly using spear phishing uh, techniques, but also uh, there was even a zero day in Microsoft PowerPoint. And these various campaigns, they targeted various high value targets, mostly focusing on Ukraine. And the second uh, highest number of detections that we detected uh, was in Poland. So there were a number of high value targets, including government, news media, transportation. But of course, the one that everyone uh, knows the best is the attack against the Ukrainian power grid, which was in December 2015. And it was the first ever malware induced blackout in history. So that was facilitated by Black Energy, and I, and I use the word facilitated really carefully, uh, because Black Energy was used in the first stages of the attacks. It was used in the preparation phases for the reconnaissance, uh, for network traversal, for uh, uh, stealing credentials and stuff like that. And then the culmination of the attack, the actual, actual blackout, happened when the attackers were able to remotely uh, access uh, the critical workstations, uh, get into their SCADA, SCADA systems, manually pull the plug, uh, using uh, stolen credentials to Radmin, which was a legitimately installed remote access software uh, used at the Ukrainian substations. So this was a very well orchestrated uh, operation, uh, also coordinated, so taking place at different geographical locations at the same time. We know that at least four regional electricity distribution substations were targeted. Okay, so that's the fear first piece of the puzzle, uh, black energy. And then almost exactly one year later, we were struck with a sense of deja vu when there was another blackout. Uh, but this time we were, we were pretty, pretty shocked and, and so to say impressed by, because this was the first ever uh, malware specifically designed to attack uh, power grids. And one of the most sophisticated pieces of malware we've ever encountered. Um, so what makes Indestroyer so, so interesting uh, was the fact that it was able to speak the language of these hardware devices uh, at the, this, this time the transmission substation in the north of Kiev that it was targeting. So uh, these, are the, these are the devices that it was going after. Uh, protection relays, just two examples from Siemens and ABB vendors which are used not only in Ukraine but also uh, in other parts of the world. So we're sending commands to these devices to open circuit breakers in an endless loop. That was its primary functionality, which in the end de-energized uh, that substation. There was also a lot of additional functionality that amplified that effect. So uh, there was the denial, denial of service functionality against uh, Siemens, exploiting a vulnerability uh, in that. And also there was wiping functionality to make recovery from the attack a lot harder. Speaking of recovery, uh, I think the most interesting part about the industry attack was uh, the large contrast between the capability of the malware and the actual, actual effect that it had. Uh, because I think we can all agree that with a cyber weapon of such a high caliber, uh, causing a blackout of around one hour around midnight is probably not the worst that the attackers could have done. So uh, kudos to uh, the Ukrainians at uh, Kiev Energo for being able to recover so quickly. Okay, so we have the second piece. Uh, then, uh, the last time we saw Black Energy uh, in the wild, uh, and I'm not talking about the old Black Energy 1 uh, being used for various cybercrime activities, but, but the targeted, the APT Black Energy, uh, was with that first power grid attack in December 2015. And after that, uh, we saw uh, the rise of what we call telebots because of, uh, in their initial phases, uh, this, let's call it a subgroup, so all of these things are related, but uh, we don't know the actual interpersonal things that are going behind the scenes. Uh, so this subgroup, uh, in the, in the early, early phases, in their early attacks, they were using uh, the Telegram API to communicate with their command and control servers, uh, hence that name. So uh, the most notable attacks of, of Telebots were against the financial 
uh, sector, the financial industry in Ukraine, and most notably attacks against the Ministry of Finance, uh, the Ukrainian Stock Exchange, uh, the Ukrainian uh, Pension Fund, uh, and so on. So uh, this is one of the campaigns uh, that, uh, that telebots were using. Again, common scenario of spear phishing. Uh, there's an Excel file that contains a malicious macro. And this is one of the, one of the connectors, one of the, one of the several connectors, uh, the links that we discovered that was linking it to the previous black energy activity. Uh, so there was, there was a large, large similarity between the macros used by black energy previously and the Telebots macro. So this was in addition to the fact that uh, infrastructure being used to distribute these uh, spear phishing emails was shared between Black Energy and, and later Telebots and so on. But also another uh, connecting factor between Black Energy and Telebots uh, was the destructive functionality that it had. So uh, as uh, a lot of you know, uh, Black Energy was also deploying destructive functionality. It, had, it actually had a plugin called a destroyer plugin uh, uh, at some point in time, but then it was also deploying a standalone tool called Till, Kill Disk for wiping functionality. Now, even though similar wipers are sort of general, uh, is, is sort of like a general group of, of, of malware, these Kill Disk samples were, were pretty specific, and they were also, also quite tailored to the individual targets that the attackers were going after, for example. Uh, the kill disks that were, that were used against the power grid were specifically uh, shutting down uh, SCADA processes. Uh, the kill disks that were uh, used against a Ukrainian media company uh, uh, at the time of local elections, they were specifically going after media files and so on and so forth. So uh, this kill disk or, or another variant of it was used also by telebots against these financial institutions. You can see uh, the targeted uh, the targeted uh, file extensions that it was going. And the interesting uh, thing was that when the employees got to work uh, on one, one morning in these financial institutions, they would discover this uh, on their screen. So any fans of Mr. Robot, so this, this was from that. But there was also other interesting things. Uh, they started getting creative with their destructive functionality and since ransomware it was 2016, uh, almost 2017, uh, which became the year of ransomware. It was, it was you know, everywhere. Uh, the attackers, they thought it would be a good idea to masquerade their, uh, their destructive functionality as financially motivated ransomware, which it, which it wasn't. Uh, also, not just because uh, the kill disk components, they had no way of you know, uh, paying the ransom. They had no way of uh, decrypting the files if the ransom had been paid. Uh, and also the ridiculous uh, amount, 222 Bitcoin, at that time being about $250,000. So we came to the conclusion that it was more, more as a disguise. And uh, there, was, there was this example. There was also a version for, for Linux, which was implemented as a grub loader. So that was also quite interesting. So forward about half a year later, we all know, uh, I think Nal Petya needs no introduction. Uh, here, and that was also uh, the work of this group of telebots. But uh, apart from the fact that the collateral damage that it was able to cause damage to some of the world's large, largest corporations, man, even when Durex was hit, you knew, knew that nobody was safe from this threat, right? <laughs> so uh, th this obviously was all over the news and the most interesting aspect, how it was able to spread through Eternal Blue and, and, and all, all of that. But from our perspective, uh, the most interesting part was uh, oh yeah, it was the most damaging uh, cyber attack in history. But from our point of view, uh, the most interesting part was uh, the link to Telebots, which is through Medoc, which was all, also mentioned earlier. Uh, so uh, the Medoc uh, backdoor was, uh, was the work of Telebots and not the only one, so there were also uh, other uh, campaigns being, being, being used to spread uh, through this channel. So this was also the connector here, and it'll also play a role later on in great energy. So XRML, also an uh, important piece of the puzzle and a link between uh, different subgroups. Uh, it was rumored for quite a long time, and, and it was the, the well-believed hypothesis that obviously in Destroyer is also the same work of, of, of this group that previously called the first blackout. 
but there was not, no, there wasn't actually any publicly revealed evidence to support those claims, even though it made sense. I mean, if there's someone attacking the power grid of a country two years in a row, it's highly likely that uh, they at least know about one another. Uh, but then earlier this year, we discovered Xeramel, uh, specifically two relatively small backdoors being used against one target. Uh, there was a Windows backdoor, there was a Linux uh, server version as well. And uh, the reason why it's, why it's an important piece of the puzzle is that it was the link that was able to uh, link uh, Indestroyer to Telebot's activity. So on the left you see uh, the Xeramel backdoor, and on the right uh, you see uh, the, the Indestroyer main backdoor. Okay, so there we have uh, the Telebots piece. And we're going to the main topic of discussion, and that is gray energy, which we consider to be the successor of uh, black energy. So in terms of victimology, uh, it's uh, very highly targeted. Uh, at the moment, uh, we know only of uh, seven targets. Uh, there quite possibly are more. Uh, but it is known for a fact that it is very targeted, and they're putting a lot of effort on stealth. Uh, so most of these targets are in Ukraine, uh, and the second uh, country which is targeted is Poland, just like the case of black energy. And also, uh, the most interesting thing is that uh, most of these targets are in the energy sector. Uh, also an interesting fact, at least one of those targets was also previously uh, targeted by black energy. So now I'm gonna pass the microphone uh, to Anton, who will guide you through how it spread and how it works. So, hello. Uh, I will talk about uh, the initial infection vector. First, uh, uh, initial infection vector that they use is a standard spear phishing. This is an example of this spear phishing. It's written in Ukrainian, and it says, please ena enable macro, and when you enable macro, it infects your computer. So it's pretty standard way. Uh, uh, second, uh, way that they use is more interesting because it's um, uh, common for large enterprises that have uh, web servers, public facing web servers that also co connected to internal network. And on the screen you see uh, um, data, data that captured by our systems and what you see here that uh, web server is spawning, uh, creating a process of PHP, and this process is creating another process of PowerShell. It's, uh, and you see that something fishing is going on here, and what they use here, they used uh, vulnerable uh, PHP script, and they use it to sneak into internal network. Uh, in terms of functionality, the gray energy is uh, very uh, extendable. So we are aware of following uh, models that um, they used. But the thing is that uh, they never push, um, the attackers, they never push uh, all models at the same time. So uh, it was hard to collect all these models, we spent a few years to, co to collect them. We don't know, um, uh, for now, we haven't seen any model that is uh, specifically targets uh, industrial systems. So it's more uh, like standard backdoor functionality like uh, black energy. Uh, there are two versions. Uh, Gray Energy Light is also tracked by uh, FireEye as Felix Root. Uh, it's a uh, first stage uh, verification type of backdoor, so it collects as much information about infected system as possible and sends it to attackers, so attackers they can say if uh, the infected system is uh, right system that they intended to infect, and it used the same persistent mechanism as uh, black energy. So one day, I, inside the network, they use following tools for uh, uh, lateral movement. 
So this is pretty common for uh, all ABT groups. Uh, in, in terms of tactics, as I said before, they never push uh, all models uh, to uh, uh, same um, compu infected computer. Um, they uh, inter one interesting case we had. They have uh, uh, self removal functionality, and uh, in one case we had they removed. Uh, this malware for, from whole network, from all computers, because uh, the malware could not access uh, the CNC server for one day. So they removed, they cleaned uh, the network themselves. So it says that uh, stealth is number one priority for them. They use internal servers for CNC proxies. This is an example. Uh, captured by our systems. And sometimes it's even hard to say uh, whether it is malicious or not, even for a uh, uh, company, for a company that owns this network. So some uh, system pro process connects to some internal servers. Is it malicious? They even don't know themselves. And uh, as Black Energy, they use uh, CNC servers that are also Tor relays. And as we said, they mainly target energy companies, and we have seen that they are focused on um, computers that are able to control industrial segment. And one interesting uh, case we had, the malware was signed by code signing certificate certificate that was uh, stolen from this uh, Taiwanese-based company called Advantech. And this company does industrial equipment. And we think that this uh, certif certificate was likely stolen because we have seen also legitimate uh, software that was signed by same certificate. And uh, one interesting uh, event we had in December 2016, half year before NotPetya incident, we have seen on um, that the gray energy attackers, they used uh, ransomware on small number of uh, computers in one network, and they use uh, worm to infect these computers. So this, this uh, worm was named by attackers Moonraker. It's probably a reference to uh, James Mo Bond movie and uh, the book. <laughs> and uh, at that time, they didn't implement uh, MBR uh, infection by, by themselves. They used uh, uh, original PETA uh, ransomware that uh, is used by cyber criminals, they embedded uh, it in uh, their uh, malware. So once it started to spread, it will execute a regional, um, not, uh, a regional PT malware. And we have seen uh, code similarities between uh, uh, not PT and gray energy at the same time. And this Moonraker Petya is not uh, large, uh, is not known by commu security community because it was uh, used only on some sm uh, small number of computers. So uh, I will pass to Robert. Yeah, so there we have the last piece that we're aware of as of right now. Uh, so yeah, as, as we said, uh, Gray Energy, we consider it to be the successor of Black Energy and uh, activity operating in parallel, uh, also with Telebots. Uh, we observe that the targeting is, is rather different and likely also the, the motivation of these subgroups is, is somewhat different. So whereas Telebots, they were uh, mostly focusing on, on business sort of like targets, uh, financial sector, and then, then lot, lot, uh, a lot of companies uh, with the NotPetya outbreak, and specifically had destructive capability in mind. 
gray energy uh, much more resembles the black energy uh, modus operandi. So more for uh, reconnaissance, uh, more, more, about, uh, more about espionage. And the obvious question is, what's next? What's the purpose of, of all this activity? And given the similarities with black energy, it is, uh, I'd say it's not unlikely and it's quite possible that this serves as a preparation phase for further uh, destructive attacks. So we definitely have to keep our eyes open. And with that, I open for questions. Sorry, really quick. Um, can you characterize the targets of gray energy in Poland? Is it more of what you've already said, or is there a distinction? Uh, energy, yeah, energy companies in Poland. Uh, I think that's, that's all the extent that, that we can say. Yeah. Likewise, could you characterize the targets um, or the small target network in which Moonraker was first observed? Target. It was a Ukrainian target, uh, Moonraker. Um, what else? Was this a gray energy one? Or was this an energy company, or was this one of the other? It was not an energy company. This this, this particular one. What flavor? So, <laughs> the the majority of, of the targets were was energy companies, uh, and there were other high value targets, uh, being um, transportation, uh, governmental entities, and that's. All the, all the verticals that, that, that we can say without being too specific. Can you touch on the ransomware as a cover for a little bit? Because I, I just hard, I find, it, find it kind of hard to believe that the actors wouldn't be sophisticated enough if they were using ransomware as a cover that they wouldn't put some sort of decryption method in there. Was it maybe more like ransomware as a, hey, our tasking is to incite, or is to uh, destroy and dis destroy and disrupt. Why not make some money while we're at it? I think. It was also also one of the decoy moves because I mean because ransomware was was all over the news at the time, so people would pay less attention to just just consider it to be okay. So this is just another ransomware attack. Uh, okay, we're not paying that ransom. Let's just you know restore from backups in the better better scenario, or just you know flash flash and for, forget our files. Uh, that 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 sort of thing. Um, but regarding the bad implementation, uh, that was also the case for NalPetya. I mean, there was, there was so many flaws, so many mistakes in the code. Uh, so yeah, also, also the case of something not being created for financial gain. Yes. 